Five. Nice. Okay, so you must get just, well, let's just wait for you. Five? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you're traveling all the time, mm -hmm. you must just get like every bacteria, every, every intestinal most disgusting, like, sickness. How many travel sicknesses have you had? <laughs> hey guys, we're uh, good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning, YouTube. Like, is it, hey, hey, is it from food you eat or something? Like, <laughs> do you just not wash your hands? Like, what, when you're traveling, what is it? Where does it come no, from? No, yeah, you know, it, it, yeah, it, you just yeah. eat some food and. Things we're, happen. We're, we're keeping the, I had that happen in Japan, actually. Which is keeping the bar for professionalism very high again this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, Good morning, everyone. I guess we're live. Are it's, we actually live on, yeah, on YouTube? We, no, no, we're, we're, we're on live. Everything? Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. We're always live on Facebook. We have this thing where we like to be 30 seconds out. I think we're yep. good. Well, welcome back, everybody, to uh, the live show. And uh, as you can see here, we have a special guest. This is Jeremy Fokins. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy's, Hi, uh, Jeremy's been a good friend in the store for a long time. And you've been on our show. I remember we did the 24 to 70 shootout. We did. One of my favorite episodes. Still and, one of our most popular yeah. episodes, yeah. Absolutely. Sweet. But thanks for coming here to join us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Um, Jordan and I travel, but only on really cushy press events where they like take care of us but yeah you actually yeah and that's it it's extent right <laughs> but you actually do we want to go out and explore around us no no no, no that doesn't sound no safe. we went off the las vegas strip like one block it was that terrifying was the, that was the most hardcore we've ever been and it was pretty dangerous that was backpacking for you that was it was scary we yeah it was scary um i got worms on no, no. <laughs> but uh you actually travel yeah. And we're talking like you take your camera gear, yep. backpack, yep. couple changes of clothes, and you're out in the bush and just like living it and meeting people. Yeah. Bu yeah. Bush. Yeah. If you, I, I bush, I think, like Australia. But <laughs> <laughs> You've been to Australia. Yeah. Yeah. There you see. Yeah. But okay. yeah, just essentially getting off, you know, that typical beaten path kind right. of thing. Just uh, getting out, exploring, uh, meeting people. Um, getting as far away from civilization as possible. Yeah, I want to talk about it because you must have some great stories, not just about adventures and danger and stuff, but also yeah. people you meet, exciting, yeah. yeah, things that happen just that you never plan. Yeah, it, it's, it, it, people's always kind of the focus when going out and traveling. Okay. Um, it's, it, I, I try and, yeah, like I said, stay away from like the big city centers and just getting out, exploring, finding those areas where necessarily people don't really travel to um, right it, there's still obviously people travel to them but i don't know just trying to find people stories to share and uh yeah that's pretty much about it yeah well and i find i mean the title of your book is the yep. human connection yep. and looking through our work here we're going to find there's always what i love so much about it is you always give your subject a sense of place you know it's not yeah. a bunch of shots wide open of a person's face with a swirly mm. background there's yeah, always yeah. context i mean if we kick over to our uh some of Jeremy's work right here. You can definitely sure. see that. And I would yeah. say while we're getting started here as well, definitely jump on Jeremy's Instagram, just yeah. Jeremy Fokens, F-O-K. Well, you know, it's on top of the, it's the name of the video <laughs> -K -K -E -N -S. That, you're yeah. that you're looking at right now. But yeah, you'll find like, there's always a really interesting kind of sense of place yeah. um, of the location, you know, really putting people in context with their world yeah. or finding, you know, small details like this, you know, uh, kind mm -hmm. of an, in different kinds of compositions, different kinds of angles, yep. a lot of environmental portraiture. Yeah, I guess I, I guess the thing I want to ask you first is, people are people are your main reason for going out to these places. Yes. Why does that fascinate you so much? Like, what is it about meeting these people that? I mean, you, you would never nobody in in a regular like North American lifestyle would really meet on a regular basis. Right. I think it's I think it just comes from a sense of curiosity. Um, going to these places always comes from wanting to learn more about where they, where these people eat, live, sleep, do, how they interact with, um, I guess, the, the uh, structure within their society. Right. Um, yeah, I, I find it fascinating. Like with some of those images, like the one up here, this this image, um, I was curious about how people live on the streets. So I started following around people that essentially live on the streets. Um, do random things to, to earn a living, whether it be selling little trinkets or toys or or even begging for money. Right. Um, so I would spend, uh, you know, the late nights into the early morning just following these people around. Mm -hmm. um, and with with that, uh, the, the, the rapport has kind of started with um, learning a bit of the language as well. Um, usually when I go to, this was taken in Bangladesh, um, I would spend mm -hmm. 
a couple of weeks just trying to learn 20 basic phrases uh, right. you know, hi bye hey, what is your name what is mine it, that's right, sort of thing. Right. so and then from there it kind of I just start photographing things that I'm interested in um, that's really where it all starts and then from there things happen um, another another big thing I, I do is I, I trust my gut so if something doesn't feel right or if something is something I, I feel like right. I can explore more it's no, let's 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 explore this. Let's, how do let's you, keep going. How do you navigate that whole um, relationship with people? You know, with the language barrier and cultural barriers. Like, what's a good key kind of mindset to have when you are trying to get into, into these situations? Because I mean, I know it's not anywhere close to the same, but you have people still at home who are maybe shy to even talk yeah. to people in their city on the streets, yeah. right? What's the key to kind of getting past those barriers and making that work? Y you have to like people. <laughs> oh well, that's that's like, why it doesn't but, but, work. But but no, I th I think you, you generally have to like people, right. um, because I, I get I, you do you get that question all the time. Yeah. You know, there's that standard question when someone wants their portrait taken away. How do you make them look relaxed or comfortable? I I think you're asking the wrong question. You need to ask yourself, do you like people? Hmm. And if you don't. Well then, maybe you shouldn't be photographing <laughs> Product know, photography know. is the way to yeah, go for you. Yeah, maybe you landscape. Should, yeah, maybe you should go work for IKEA or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I don't know. It's it's yeah. Well, let me put it this way. So, you know, obviously you, you have a fascination with people who want to meet them, but that doesn't mean they all like you, right, Jeremy? No. I mean, there must be some people no. where they're like, no, yeah. I don't want you taking my picture. Like, how do you, you took a while to win me over. So. It does. Yeah. So when going to places like like in Bangladesh and, and places and other places in the world, um, th one thing that happens is the camera never comes out when I first meet someone. It's literally eye to eye. Okay. Um, it's amazing what a, just a, a smile and, and a hello can do. Mm -hmm. um, Learning a bit of the uh, like, little learning a bit of the language where, wherever you're traveling helps immensely. Mm. I think people will see that you're just making an effort. It's it's like here if, yeah. if someone here comes up to you on the street and you find that their English isn't very good, but you see the, the effort, you make the effort to help them. Right. Whether right. if they're trying to find the bus or they're trying to look for something on a map, it's just like no, then I can, let me help you. Out. No, it's you make that down that way. Right yeah, away. it's mm -hmm. it's just it's mm. it's that effort and it's you know and it's it's being kind, it's being genuine. It's it, that's. I don't know. I think it just starts there. And you must have to let certain opportunities go. I mean, there must be certain. You meet someone, you're like, oh, I like, I really want to take a picture of this person. Yeah. You're like, well, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and right. you got to respect that, right? right like, right. it's. I wouldn't want someone coming in my face taking taking a picture if, if I wasn't for sure comfortable. And, and that's the other thing. So obviously, if you don't even have your camera out when you're meeting these people, yeah. and you are trying to get this relationship, I mean, of course, I tell students all the time too. It's like you're gonna get a shot. If you take a shot of somebody creepy from across the street, it looks like you're taking a shot being <laughs> creepy across you're the street. You're being creepy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it looks like it, right? You know? Um, you always get them that, you know, they're just looking off, or maybe they look at the camera, and they always have, like, this look like they just smelt something really bad, right? <laughs> and, you know, but it's not a... It's like, yeah. how do you get that genuine connection? You have to meet the people. You have to have that relationship yeah. first. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta... You gotta go introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm assuming you don't really take pictures of people on the street unless it's, like... I mean, I, unless you're gonna go meet them and that, talk with That's them. a really good question. I, I, I used to, when I first started taking pictures in 2008, I went to, I went to Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos mm. for three months, and that's how I thought that's... How, how you did it. How yeah. I thought you had to take pictures of people or how you, that's how you did right. it. And I found it very, it, I struggled a bit. I couldn't, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Because I found it, I found it to be a bit intrusive, creepy, very yeah. creepy. Well, and just detached as well, right? Very mm -hmm. detached. And you're not getting the results, probably. Exactly, and I and I and it was it, it happened within like days when I was there, and I didn't I wasn't enjoying taking pictures, and this was the reason why I went there was to take just pictures. take pictures mm -hmm. and to travel and to just explore and 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 whatnot. Um, and then it happened. I got stuck in this massive rainstorm, and I had to divert. Um, my uh, my my travels to this this random village in um, in Vietnam uh, north and it, I got stuck there for like four days but this family kind of brought me in and put me up in this like little hut bamboo they're like this guy's fort. gonna die out in the jungle yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it, was really, it wasn't even the jungle it was not like that at all it was just he's got like, worms he's okay but he's, he's like I don't want him sitting outside my house in the rain but it, yeah, it, it was this like, wonderful it was this wonderful interaction and mm. that's where it started and then I started taking taking pictures of 
people that I would inter- that I would meet and interact with, and I mm. thought, okay, this is this feels better. And then I, I went with that. I trusted my gut. It was it was I stayed away from you know the seventy two hundred from far away and just got up really close right. with a wide angle lens and made it um, made it made it um, yeah. Intimate, right? Thank you. That's yeah. the word. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, there's an amazing connection when people know that you're taking their photo. There is. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the only way to really get that genuine response. I think so. Yeah. And, and just, it's, and it's learning and it's having a conversation. And I think that's, that's why I enjoy it. And then it must open up so many other possibilities just from a, a travel um, sense where if you meet these people, they then show you, they're like, come with us. We'll show yeah. you this beautiful landscape or yeah. we'll show you this yeah. event that we do. Totally. Uh, you, would, you know, that other people would never get to see, yeah. right? It's, mm. a, it's amazing what happens when, if, you just, if, you, if you just explore the idea of, of, of meeting, new spe- meeting new people, um, mm. doors, doors open, it's, it's, especially when you travel. Wow. Um, yeah, especially when you travel. But you have to like people. You well, do. and remember too, even if you're not traveling, like uh, if we jump over here, we've got some shots in New York. You know, everyone mm-hmm. here speaks the same language as you. Yeah. Um, so we've got some of this dance stuff here. But it yeah. still applies the same way, right? I mean, you know, even going to a place like New York where you think it's home or you know close to home. Yeah. There's different subcultures. There's different. There's different mannerisms. There's different. Yeah. You know, ways that you speak and that you uh, that you interact. Exactly. So this is from a series. It, it happened randomly. Um, I was in New York. I was um, my my background. I was a dancer before I was a photographer. Yeah, you um, were. Which you will demonstrate live. Which is obvious. You got to show the twenty first. We, we haven't done like an interpretive <laughs> dance live show yet. So we'll talk about the gear and you try to illustrate that, that kind of with the poetry of your body. <laughs> yes. So I was in New York. I was. I had some friends down there. I was the poles on the subway train must have made you feel at home. Very <laughs> much at home. Very much at home. I just didn't have my man thong with me. Uh, <laughs> so this, I was, I was, I was in New York. I was photographing some things down there with some friends, and um, this was, I think, I it was the that. third last Beautiful. day I was there, and I kept hearing about these break dancers on, on the subway, hmm. and I, I spent a couple days down there just trying to find them, and I couldn't. Um, and then I rented some gear down there, and as I was taking my gear back on the train, um, it happened. All of a wow. sudden, all of a sudden, this this voice comes out of nowhere, and they started shouting. They, what did they say? Like you want? What did they say? You want a party, or you you ready to get down? I'm like, what's going yes, on? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then this this horrible this horrible sound system started playing and you can kind of see it in the images there on there it is right, right. There's a, that's angel so he, that's his name and he's holding the sound system and it just starts blaring i think it was like i think it was like naughty by nature or something like that. It was just <laughs> horrible stuff but it was awesome anyways this music starts blaring and these guys just start dancing and they use up the small space and they use the express line Specifically, so they can maximize the time they, they can dance. Right, but, right, without genera- all the stops. Right, exactly, and generate more money. Anyways, so it happened, and they started this, did this dance, and I'm like, oh my! And I'm literally standing right next to him as he's doing these flips. I'm like, this is crazy. So they stop, and they get off the train, and yeah, and um, and as I get off the train, I ask him, I'm like, I'm sorry, but this is really cool. Um, this is gonna sound really weird, but my name's Jeremy. I'm from Canada. Um, used to be a dancer. However, I've been wanting to photograph. Um, break dancers on trains and I'm only in New York for one more day here's my card um, if you're interested let me know I'd love to just follow you around today or sorry tomorrow right, um, right. and just let me know and I just, just left it open there I, I let, le- left it up to them um, you know hoped and then at about 10 o'clock that night they said yeah this mm. sounds great we saw your work and uh, you're you know you're not a creep, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you're you not the police. You're, you're not, not trying to like, right? a trouble or anything. Exactly. And then the next morning at 10 a.m., we met at uh, we met in uh, 125th Street um, up in Harlem, and uh, we started running the express line, and I spent the entire day with him. And Very cool. It was awesome. Yeah, we still keep in contact still. Um, and so that's, that's these were all from the second day, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 So this is when you had already developed a relationship De- and a rapport yeah. with them, yeah. even though, you know, initially this might look like you're just pulling out a camera and shooting candidly. Exactly. You're, yeah. you're getting wide. You're very close here. Yeah. yeah. You know, people are comfortable with you being there. Yeah. And, you know, that really comes across in the images yeah. as well. I love how, like, everybody else on the train is just so, like, every day. Right? I know. They just yeah. don't even want to. I like, love the people who are really trying not to make <laughs> like, eye ladies contact. Putting, yeah. Ladies putting your makeup on. Like, you know, it's just normal day, it's, right? Yeah. It's so fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. Some people hated it. Like, that, that one with the boy in the, in the back bridge, he's on the platform practicing. 
So, uh, where is it? Right oh, there. Right, yeah. So if you look at the man to the left, yeah. he actually started yelling. Wow. <laughs> the guy's just like, you guys are ridiculous. I don't know why. Look at this boy. You guys are working too. And he just, well, he just pretty much told me like, <laughs> Stop F following on. your yeah, dreams. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, was wow. more, it was awesome though. But that's what they do. They, they wait. And if there's too little people, they won't get on the train. But if there's too many, then they can't dance, obviously. Right, right, right. Bodies. Right. So they play this like cat and mouse game looking up and down the train that's as it great. pulls that's into awesome. the station. It's, it was really cool, actually. Ron, do we have any questions there? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Jeremy. Yes. Um, where are you? Uh, right, here. right there. Jer- Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, what, this is Jeremy. <laughs> what is your travel camera and kit like? <laughs> what is my tra- um, it used to, be, when I first started traveling, just but still had no idea what I was doing, um, I brought everything. Like, I brought about <laughs> 50 pounds of gear and used probably 10% of it. Yes. Now, it's literally one camera, one body, sorry, maybe two lenses, um, and then that's it. If that's like just mm-hmm. using available light, going right. overseas um, sort of thing. But now I've kind of switched my photography to a kind of a different style with some of the portraits I'm doing, um, where I'm bringing strobes and things on site. So usually one or one strobe, one camera, maybe one or two lenses, and then that's that's it. So you're trying to keep it light, yeah. Oh yeah, like take take minimal minimal. Like if you don't use, if you find you don't use your 7200 at home at all, um, don't bring it because it, yeah. things a beast. Yeah. Are you normally using zooms just to try to maximize? No, no. I use primes. Right. Either it's just a 24 fixed or a 50 fixed, and uh, yeah, that's, that's that's all I use. That's it, 24 and a 50. Yeah. Well, and that makes perfect sense for me. Again, looking at these because those are, you know, when you get kind of below that 85 mark, that's where you're yeah. really. Mm-hmm bringing your environment into the shot. And that's always what's kind of stood out to me about your work. Yeah, you yes. do like to play with your background. I do. Yeah, yeah, and show it as part of the composition, yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk briefly about that, um, how you've changed your shooting style a little bit. You mentioned yep. how you're using a strobe, things like that. Yeah. Um, Cause this would be some of your, let's just uh, cycle. Uh, give me a second here, guys. Yeah, Ron, we have probably more questions here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, whereabouts in Bangladesh were those shots taken? Oh my goodness, um, all over. All over, okay. All over, so uh, some of the, st- more like the city stuff was t- taken in Dhaka, so that's the capital. Oh, uh, okay. And then some of the more remote locations, that's down in, uh, I spent a fair amount of time down in Bola, which is, it usually takes about two to three days down to get there. It's an island just off the southern coast of Bangladesh, right on the, it's the Meg- Meghna River. Um, it's, yeah, it's all over, from the north all the way down to the south. Um, I didn't get over to the eastern parts, over by Cox Bazaar or anything like that, or um, uh, or tea plantations, but uh, mostly the north, west, uh, central, and then south, and then southwest. Yeah, about half, about three quarters of the country. Yeah. There's a pretty standard one. Uh, one lens, what would it be? Oh. Yep. Um, and also from the same person, do you feel that image stabilization is important for your travel photography? No. Okay. <laughs> because His photos he, aren't what, in focus. What is image stabilization? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what that button is? I didn't know that. Just yeah. this little switch. I was. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Just so everybody knows, Jeremy uses uh, a, an Elan Seven and a fifty mil one point eight, and that's it. That's, yep. That's all he does. And and a flash. Yeah. And yeah. He develops his yeah. film in the ocean. A, a bit. <laughs> <of> <laughs> Uh, that's an artist. <laughs> and I print at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> when I get home, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Costas, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> but yeah, what would your one lens be if you, if you had I, to? I think <sighs> between the... I, honestly, um, uh, I, th- uh, I don't know. Uh, that's tough. T- it would either be the 24 or the 50. I think 24, obviously, for the environments, but 50, like if, if, if we're going to talk about like like getting up in close per- portraits, it, it would be a 50. Right. Yeah, like is this a 50 this, here yeah. if we kick over? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then cycling through some of your other, this is more recent work, right? This is, this started, um, this is a project I just, I started back in 2014 called Back to the Land. Mm-hmm. Um, just going across Canada, 
visiting all 10 provinces and three territories intermittently Very cool. um, over the next 10 to 15 years. It's a long-term project that I'm doing. I'm in year four, four this year. Mm. Um, going to, again, these um, small towns, villages, remote areas, getting as far away again from kind of those city centers and finding these kind of unsung heroes of Canada mm. um, and telling their stories. Well, and it's cool too. There's actually a short documentary about this uh, that a friend of the store, Chantel Kolesnik, did. Yes. Um, can people find that online now? Yes. Uh, she she actually she worked with me to try to doing the trailer for this. Mm -hmm. So we're still kind of talking about how we can actually make this into some kind of project. Yeah. Project yeah. with with more video elements, obviously. Beautiful. Um, yeah. It's 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 kind of again. Mm. It's a personal project. It's one that I'm doing out of uh, just something I, I want to do. Um, this isn't part of it, though. The, these two images, unfortunately, are not part of the Back to the Land, but okay. they are more profile pieces. Again, very same style. Very the environmental same. portrait, yeah. Yeah, same sort of storytelling um, approach as well. This is definitely all... 24. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, absolutely, yeah, wide, wide shots, but also, yeah. of course, strobe used here. So I you're do. bringing like a small compact light? No. no? I'm, uh, what, do you, what do you normally take out there so when you do that? So with this, with this light, I... Um, I, I was using uh, Palsy Buff Einsteins at the time. Okay. So bringing um, just one strobe and then a big octabank okay. or an octabox, and then uh, one light, and then obviously using the sun as a as a kicker. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, uh, and just battery packs and all that yep. kind of stuff. Yeah, battery packs yeah. keep it light. Um, yeah, just Beautiful. hauling the gear around on a beach and. Mm -hmm. And when you're traveling, would you be bringing one of those bigger strobes, or are you just bringing like a speed light and some modifiers when you travel? I don't bring. I don't use speed lights at all, actually. Um, I, 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 they're not. They don't have the power range. They you can't attach. Um, you Such know, a small light source. Yeah. yeah, the modifiers are, that you attach to them aren't very good. I just just my own opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I love big soft light with big modifiers. Um, I can control the light better. Yeah. Um, and then obviously with the power of a Einstein or a, or a Pro Photo or something like that, it's it's easier. Especially when you mix with outdoor light yeah. as well. The mix ambient. with the sun, yeah. mix with the ambient. Yeah, for totally. sure. For sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how long would you take, you know, in a case like this, um, where you're doing like a bigger location portrait, how long are yeah. you there interacting with that person, setting up your shot? That's a, that's a really good question. This is Ron Ost. So he owns a general store in... Um, um, in a town called Big Beaver. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, we'll I'm leave not, that to the comments. I'm not, yeah. I'm not making that up. It's this one. It's this wonderful story, actually. Um, so Ron has owned this store for a very long time. This, it was actually his family owned it, and you can buy anything from like shreddies to gun ammunition. It it has. A oh yeah, I see shotgun shells right like, there. There's and 22 and there, raid. There's <laughs> <everything>. <laughs> That's, That's pest control. The, it's Shotgun amazing. shells, twenty-two long rifle, and raid. Yeah. Best so, it's we. I, I I found him randomly. Actually, I was in I was in a place. Um, oh, what was the town called? I can't remember. The sailor town was called. It will come to me. And uh, it was another artist that I was photographing. And he said, "Well, you should go check out this general store. It's it's probably another two hours, two hours east. Um, and there's this gentleman by the name of Ron. And so I c called him on the phone and said, "Hey, my name's Jeremy. I'm." I'm I'm uh, doing this project. Um, will you be in town today? And just essentially told him what I was doing, my right. intentions. And he's like, "Yeah, come on down." Yeah. So I'm like, "Okay, I'll see you in a couple hours." And showed up and went into the store and took a walk around. It's it was, it was crazy. Cool. Yeah, I then, love the old like Safeway style. Yeah, like, it's like curved it's, uh, grocery. It's crazy. So I uh, show up on set and then took a little walk around, told cool. him what I was doing again, just kind of reiterate what what we're doing. And then probably took me 10, 15 minutes to set up the lights, mm -hmm. and then um, we had, a, and then we just have a conversation. It, it's not like, okay, I need you to stand like this. It, right. It, it, my portraits don't happen like that. It, it starts with a conversation. It starts just tell me, tell me your story, and then from there, I'll, I'll sometimes just let my phone just record it, just so I can right. remember for future. Because I'll do like a blog post about. Right. It. You want right. to get the story yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I remember these things. Yeah. yeah. So and then um, take a quick portion. It probably takes. Five ten minutes. Yeah, and like, we've seen you do environmental yeah. portraits. Of course, when we did the shootout yeah. and stuff too. Yeah. yeah. So Ron's yeah. only took I'd say like half an hour in total. Forty half an hour, forty five minutes max, like with setup and takedown and you have any and conversations. Uh, are there any opportunities where you're like, I really wanted to take a picture of this person, but I couldn't get it to happen? Yes. Well, any stories like that you want to share with us? Um. You're like, oh, like, oh, I'm just like yeah. to this day, you're just like, ah, oh, I wish yeah. I could have taken the portrait. Yeah, so the, the, the boy with the goat, Raphael, um, Raphael, I met him and his mom 
on the side of the road, and that was in Slocan, out in the Kootenays. Okay. Um, and yeah, so they live on a commune, hmm. and she, she was very reserved. I, I, I tried to get a little bit more of their story, um, but she seemed quite didn't want to yeah. to. And I, you got to respect that, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. But her. She seemed like she had a bit of a an interesting life, maybe a bit of some hardship as well. Um, I, I yeah, I really wanted to photograph her like this, but um, she, she 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 started to, and then she just said, you know what, I, I think I'm good. I'm like, okay, that's that's fine. Right. We'll we'll stop. Yeah. Um, but it's Raphael, beautiful Raphael was great. Like he yeah. had his goat with him, and he they 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 farm, and they all oh, they live on a commune. They live off the land. Um, he goes to school just like any other kid as well. Mm. Um, yeah, it was just it's. You, you don't think you find these things, especially in your own country. So it was yeah, just wow. seeing this random boy with this goat in, in this parking lot is just awesome. How much do you keep in touch with people like this after the fact? Some people I keep in contact a lot. The yep. uh, Raphael and his mom, I, I, they, they, um, they didn't have a mobile number or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Right, not but the best Wi-Fi on the commune. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do send them prints. So whenever I meet a, uh, someone, I'll I'll send them a picture. Oh, okay. Um, I'll get their address. Always send them a print. It's it's funny. I recently had someone reach out to me on Facebook. Um, so Grego, the, the trapper, the gentleman with the, him. Yeah, the, yeah. So his his daughter randomly reached out to me on Facebook and said, "I just saw the photo you did of of my father mm -hmm. and." So it was, it was this wonderful, she, she randomly saw it and then she contacted me and we've been having these conversations about his, his life. And Grego was a really interesting mm -hmm. man. He lives off this like back logging road in the middle of nowhere in Northern BC, he runs a trap line, spends his time hunting bears and beaver. Like this guy is insane. Yeah, I love, I love this picture. Know, right? It's like yeah. the smallest little detail I didn't yeah. notice when I was first shuttling through. But yeah, you get the two elements of his personality yeah. here, yeah. where this is kind of a solemn expression on yeah. his face, but then with the tongue out doing yeah. the Einstein pose. I know, like right? the lantern going on, yeah. all the equipment. I mean, do you do you ever set up the the area at all? Or, no, or no, that's no? that's his home. You just look for the the angles that yeah. you want. Yeah, I, I look for kind of the best. Be like, hey, what's your here? favorite couch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but it was beautiful. It was interesting that the, the this, so his daughter reached out to me and now we're having this wonderful conversation because he s said some things and I'm like I don't know if I believe him, right. so, but it turns out his father was a circus clown. Wow. So Greg, so there's this whole and and when he told me that I was like, okay I believe you but I don't know how much I should believe you. <laughs> and then his daughter daughter reached out and I and we had this wonderful conversation over the phone and I said well just tell me this. Is Greg goes to have was he a circus clown? She's like, yes, and I have photos to prove it. Wow. So I'm going to create this whole separate story around it and actually oh, follow up with her, his daughter, and then do like a whole separate project Jeez. around it. So oh. yeah, it's 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 amazing what happens. One well, other we, thing, we, we, um, sorry, really quickly that I just wanted to point out that yeah. I also really appreciate about your work is, um, oh, let's scroll down. Yeah. So when we're looking at something like that portrait with the lantern or we're looking at the convenience store right here, I yep. love how you always work with the lighting in the mm -hmm. location. Even yep. though this is lit with strobes, it's such yep. a crutch, I think, where a lot of people will just overpower all the ambient light in a place. Exactly. But this gives you so much context. Like if we didn't have that greenish, reddish yeah. fluorescent in the shot or everything, yeah. uh, we'd lose a lot of the context of this being that small place. So yeah, if you're working with strobes, I would say that's something that you do that I really appreciate that a lot Thank of people you. should consider is yeah. working with the actual mm -hmm. light in that location. Yeah, I, I think, look at where your light's coming from, right? So I, it's, it's figure out where your light's coming from and see if you can mimic it a little bit. Do you ever gel them? I don't, actually. Mm -hmm. Some, okay, so yeah. I have, obviously, on commercial shoots. Yeah, right, like yeah. That. But no, um, I'll, I'll sometimes plate things as well. So I don't know if people know the term plating or they probably call it something else. Um, I'll take a separate exposure for the background and then s and an exposure for the subject. Gotcha. And then just combine them in Photoshop just to kind of bring a more authentic look to the, to what the actual background looks like when mm -hmm. I show up on set. Right. Very um, cool. Yeah. So sometimes that happens. Sometimes we don't need to. Um, it, it Depending on what kind of light you have. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Cool. Ronnie. Yeah. We must have yeah. questions. Yeah. Let's uh, let's get back to you. Um. Jeremy, will you ever take an environmental portrait of the camera store with Chris and Jordan? Uh, we could do that. Ugh, this place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, out, I'm out in the river. Yeah, <laughs> see? For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah all right. on, on set? I'd on like, set. Yeah. I'd love an environmental portrait of me at my kitchen table editing on my yes. laptop. That would be amazing. To be in my natural state. Um, 
Jeremy, how did you start? How did you first start learning and practicing with flash and strobes? That's a great question. Um, with with strobes, I assisted. So I okay. called up other commercial photographers. And uh, any names you want to throw out there? Yeah, of course. Uh, Noah Fowlis, yep. Nathan Elson. Um, uh, those are pretty much the two. They've that, both been on the show too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Noah Fowlis, Nathan yeah. Elson, yeah. Huge, 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 huge fans. Um, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of theirs. Nathan especially really does like that kind of yeah. single light work as he, well for a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah those guys were huge in, in, in my hmm. education for strobing and lighting and things like that. So um, that's where I started. And then just practicing uh, and playing around and experimenting and mm -hmm. figuring out what works for me, what might work for someone else might not work for me. There's some, yeah, it's it's hmm. just playing around and having fun. On a side note then too, when you are traveling to foreign countries or you're mm -hmm. traveling minimally, you don't yep. take strobes and you're looking for ambient light. Yep. Um, are you, I mean, obviously you've got one, like you've got Bangladeshi boy just in the middle of the street. You're saying, oh, headlights, perfect. Yep. But what about moving people to ambient light? Do you look for light and say, hey, can I get you to stand over here? Or yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Um, there, there'll be certain times like for, uh, there's, a, there's one portrait. I didn't, I didn't supply this one, but there's one portrait of a gentleman named Sarsu Sa uh, Muhammad. He was one of the first portraits I took in Nepal and um, he had this wonderful He's an older man and he had these wonderful textures and lines in his face. So to, he was in, and it was a bright sunny day, so I put him in the doorway of mm. this kind of hut, makeshift mud structure, and it essentially just blacked out the background. Very so cool. you're able to you know, expose for the skin, put him in a black background, and then it's- It's basically like an instant backdrop. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. It's exactly. And then you have the other gentleman, I think it was also in Bangladesh, where he's inside the boat looking yeah. up into the light, and you're like, okay, like the shaft of light, if, can I get you to- that, No, that was, he was, he was just right there. sitting there, and his, actually his buddies are above him, oh, yelling at him. Oh, cool. Yeah, and he kind of looked up and then, Quick. So sometimes you just see the light and it yeah. works. Sometimes you move people and whatever. Yeah. Again, part of the thing about getting rapport with these people is yeah. you can then do that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. By the way, don't go on the street and just be like, "Oh, hey, sorry, sir. Can I, <laughs> can I just get you stand by sorry, this the window here?" Sorry, the lights really bad. Yeah. 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 Just, you look just, terrible just right now. Just, just like, yeah. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. You're gonna well, get punched. <laughs> talking about that in a street context, yeah. like you have, have this series with little. Punch? No. I have. I oh, no. <laughs> Close. Oh. Yeah. Close, but n not yet. I want to hear that story. I got threatened in, in England by uh, Turkish butchers. Did you? Yeah, the other night I was like, no photo, I don't want you to go from my way. I lie, I'm sorry. Good. I got assaulted my first three hours in Vietnam from the cab driver. See? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, we agreed on a price. Oh yeah. He didn't oh. like it. When I gave him the money, when we got out of the cab, he's like, no, no, it took longer. And I'm like, it's not happening, buddy. And I literally gave him the money and he slapped my hand and money just flew off <laughs> inside the cab. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. First major backpacking trip. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm already like, pissing people and off. And I'm, I'm already pissing people <laughs> off. Right. This is just great. It, it actually was bad. It th threw me off a little bit for the first few days, but it was fine. <laughs> but yeah. um, are you using the... Uh, dragon effect uh, for your male portraiture. What's dragon effect? I know, right? I'm, uh, I'm apparently, this is uh, a, an effect by a Polish photographer named Andrzej uh, Dragon. Wow, they wrote a paragraph the, the, comment. The, 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 no, no, I had to Google He's this. He's Googling it. No. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, I, I, before I ask I these questions, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if I'm massacring With the Drago effect, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drago effect. If, if if I'm massacring the uh, yeah, pronunciation, this is my first like, time. Yeah, so yeah. the effect uses dramatic lighting and editing techniques that enhance the tonality and skin textures of the yeah. subject. Uh. Oh, my editing their skin tones and things. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I'm I'm obviously editing my images, but I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not spending a ton of time on these, on these, on these. Portraits, editing them. Yeah, um, I like I said, depending on whatever the lighting conditions are, I try and match it within right. that environment. It's so all very motivated. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is. Um, you know, I'll do a little. I might warm it a bit, but I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna spend four hours color grading an image. Yeah, you're not accentuating no. wrinkles and lines. And no, that kind no, of no, stuff. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's literally. It's. It needs to. For me, it needs to be. It needs to be authentic. It and needs to be such genuine. a big part of it too is just chasing yeah. the light, yeah. finding the right light, yeah. making it work. I totally. mean, that's really photography. Yeah. 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 How big is the Octobox? Uh, good question. How big is it, Jeremy? How big is it? <laughs> you know. No. Well, I know, but they don't. So you got to tell it's them. A, right? I, use, I use a 47-inch Octo. And then, you just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Do you want me to tell them how big it is? It's <laughs> not my place. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not ashamed. Uh, it's a lot <laughs> smaller box than I thought. Follow Chris on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> much, much smaller box than I expected. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for now. Oh, good. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, I'd love to go through this series quickly as well. Yeah. Lily. Um, with Lily. Yeah. Can you give us a little backstory on this? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So this was, again, New York. Same trip with the, with the break dancers. So again, just exploring New York, um, had just just taking pictures really, mm -hmm. um, and I noticed this woman was putting this um, pile of cans. We're trying to put this pile of cans on top of an already massive cart full of cans. So I gave her a hand. She looked. She was struggling. So I put it up. Helped her put it up there. I think you might you might be able to. Uh, there's the big portrait of her right there. Yes. So that top bag there, she couldn't wow. get up there. And if you look to the left, that's where she was getting them from. So walking down this street and just kind of helped her and um, and then she said thank you and, and, and whatnot and so we went we both went our separate ways and then I kind of stopped and thought there might be a story to tell here so I went back mm -hmm. and I I pulled up my camera and I just said you know I would love to take your portrait it turned out she didn't speak English very well so mm -hmm. then there's this barrier so then um, I just said you know started you know, playing a game of charades and, and motioning to you know, take a picture. And she's like, yeah, I, I, I'll i do that. So um, she was already halfway across the street pulling her can, so we just stopped there and I took the picture. And then I, um, what happened? I, we, 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 we exchanged phone numbers and I said, tomorrow we take a picture. And, she, and she's like, yeah, we, we can do that. <laughs> so it was fine. Next day I call her and we couldn't communicate to the point where I didn't know where she was. Right, on right. On which street or anything. So I'm like, damn it. So I'm at this like stall. I was getting hungry and I was getting hangry. So I get at the stall getting some food and trying to figure out how can I how can I how can I find out where she actually is? And so there's this guy ordering food and I'm like, this is gonna be the most random question. I asked this guy, I'm like, by chance do you speak Mandarin or Cantonese? <laughs> and he looks at me and he's like, seriously? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, actually, I speak both. I'm like, no <laughs> way. I'm like, I'm going to ask you the most, the biggest favor and I'll even pay for your lunch. And he's like, who is this? He's like, dick? who are you? I'm like, and I just told him who I was, what I was doing. I said, I'm, I'm supposed to be um, connecting with this woman that I'm supposed to be photographing. Here's her number. Here's my phone. Can you just talk to her and find out where she is? And I, where I need to meet her, and he picks up the phone and he starts talking. And this and I'm, I thought, you know, it, I'm like, it takes 20 seconds to ask where she is. And then he goes on, and they start talking for like 10 minutes. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And so he's like, okay, okay. And he, she's like, he's at, she's at the corner of this and this. I'm like, oh my goodness. And he's like, yeah, but you better hurry because she has to go to another location after. Right. So you better hurry. So get wow. my gear. And and then I, and there she was in the corner, and we hung out for the rest of the day. And I helped her collect some bottles and. And uh, kind of cool. followed around her route. So she does this. She does this route around this area, and collects cans from from various restaurants. And the restaurants leave their doors open for her, so she can actually go into the restaurant, right. Right. grab the cans that they've saved for her, and then she does this every day. She makes about sixty to seventy bucks in cans mm -hmm. every day. Um, I love this picture because it, look at the picture that she's collected, and look look who the art who the photographer is. Oh, is that a Leibowitz? No, that's an Ansel Adams. Oh, Ansel. Really? Uh, I was thinking <laughs> Annie. Oh, okay. In the garbage? In the garbage. <laughs> I so, I some people would say that's where they belong. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> some people would. I checked if it was authentic. I was just like, I wonder if this is real because yeah. it's not. I'm paying for it. She made more than 60 or 70 dollars that day. I'm like, honey, you need to come with me because we're going to make you a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Leave all your cans Leave or precious <laughs> artwork. <laughs> I will collect it every night. Wow. But she was she was so sweet, and the, cool. she she knows people in these communities, and people were giving her bottles as well, just randomly. People would stop in cars and give her bottles. Um, so she became a story, obviously, throughout these neighborhoods. Like, yeah, yeah people know her; they know her by name. They and, do. Yeah, they, yeah. they they they. She it's like she has this like territory, and she just runs the same route. Very um, cool. And people they were so good to her, and everyone was really. She was wonderful with me too. Like she <laughs> she was. She was she she was great. I was I was I was very honored that she let me follow around and photograph her and whatnot. Wow. So, yeah. any other questions coming in there, Ron? Um, let's see. That's his How, signature sound. Uh, 
How do you deliver your images to the public? Any preferred methods? Ooh, um, kind of want to talk about that. that's a good. That's segue. a good. That's a good. That's a. That's yeah. a good. That's a good question. Um, I'm really in, like so I like social media is great. I'm kind of getting not tired of it, but I'm kind of changing my perspective on how I choose to do work and share work now. Hmm. I'm a horrible writer, but I do like to write. <laughs> so I like doing like a. I, I like I like making blog posts. That's book now. Um, I could write here. I'll hold it for you. Oh, thanks. Um, so it's yeah. For, for me, I like like blogging is really fun. Social media is fun as well. Yep. Um, I, I like I like presenting live as well. Like I'll do talks at like libraries and things like that. I yeah. really enjoy that. I'll do talks at schools, um, just because it's it's fun yep. and kids love it. And I don't know, sh sharing sharing stories is. You'll do TCS TV live shows. I'll even do TCS. Yeah. <laughs> when you're slumming. <laughs> when, I'm slumming. when things are slow and uh, the weather is crap. You know. <laughs> like you know, you, you have this book, The Human Connection. I do. Absolutely beautiful book. Yeah. And. I mean, just tell us briefly, what was the process in making a book? You know, like, this is your first book, right? It is. Yeah. 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 So, um, I, I didn't I didn't go through the normal process. It was actually, um, it was actually Peter who actually uh, kind of set this up. Peter here at Peter the store. Our, our yeah, store, store owner. Yeah, yeah. store yeah. owner. So, Rocky Mountain Books was looking for new photographers um, back in 2013. Hmm. And... Um, yeah, Peter mentioned my name. They reached out to me. I was actually in New York shooting Lily and these dancers mm. when I got the call, and I, I thought it was a joke. <laughs> and I was, I was like, uh, you're kind of you're kind of wasting my data. Like, is this for real? And uh, Don at Rocky Mountain Books is like, no, seriously, I, I got a contract here waiting. Let's let's talk. Um, love the work. So we had a you conversation, and then a year later we had a published book. So yeah, yeah and it's essentially it's all the work from. Bangladesh to Nepal back in 2011. Um, I kept a journal of all the of all those kind of stories and trips mm -hmm. and things. So it's a, a culmination of about 210 images from that trip, and then the writing and the stories behind mm -hmm. all these kinds right. of people. What about gallery exhibitions? I mean, is yeah. that something? What, what's the impetus behind doing that? Because um, you know, I think I think a lot of people might think nowadays. I mean, a book, okay, you can market it, you can sell it, you can yep. get it out there, you can put it on Amazon, you can put whatever, right? Yep. Um, Instagram, obviously, you can yep. share it. Online website, you can share it. Yep. But then you think galleries are such a localized thing. Yeah. What's the impetus behind wanting to share your work that way? I think if you if you want to get your work in a gallery, I think that's great. I think there's certain certain you know there's certain ways that you have to do that, like call submissions. Um, you need to make sure your work fits within a gallery's mandate, um, and you need to make sure that a gallery likes it as well. And if they where's can, they the can sell fun it. in it? I, what do you mean? I, I may believe there's fun. I'm, I'm not trying to be yeah. like, this is stupid, don't do it. I'm saying, <laughs> for you, where's the drive to then do, like, what is the appeal of showing work on the walls? I think it's showing it to another audience. I think it's showing it to an audience that enjoys going to a place to be entertained or to enjoy art. Hmm. Um, yeah, I love exhibiting my work. I've had, I've had, I've had a decent amount of success by doing that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Exhibit. I think it's just another way to kind of share your work, and it's different kind of community. Different yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, different way to connect with the public. There must be too. something about just getting to look at a print large. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, phone. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, it looks yeah. nice. But you know, getting actually a print. Yeah. Well, um, and we even did that today when we were looking at some of those environmental portraits. We're finding small details in the image yeah. that really tell a larger yeah. story. And yeah. I think, you know, that's because we were analyzing these knowing we were talking about them today. But a gallery is the perfect place where you can sit there in front of an image yeah. and really drink in all the small details mm -hmm. of it. Print, printing your work in, is, is amazing. I, and I tell everyone whenever I do a talk or if someone asks me about, you know, just photography in general, print your work. Like, mm -hmm. there is nothing better than getting a fresh piece off the printer and looking at it, especially if it's large. Like, oh yeah. It's, yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It is, it's, and it's, and it's archival now. Now you have something that's tangible that you can actually keep forever. Well, tell us about this event that you have coming up. Yeah. Cause you, you know, speaking of galleries, yeah. I mean, there's sort of an exhibition you want to talk about, right? So, yeah. So we're, um, a curated space, um, called, uh, a curated, a curated space at a cafe here in Calgary called Gravity Cafe. Mm -hmm. Um, and what we do is, uh, we feature, um, local artists for six month exhibitions. So it's a long, long period of time, time which is yeah. great. Yeah. And Gravity does get a, a fair amount of traffic. Um, and it's a wonderful space. Um, lots of natural light. They make great food, great coffee. They have live music. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful space. Mm. So I've been asked by the owner, Andy, to um, put artwork up on the walls and he's, and he loves photography. Mm. So 
my work's been on the wall. Nathan Elson's work has been on the wall there. We've had a few other photographers, um, people like Philip Kamwesher, uh, Chris Schofield is up right now mm -hmm. on the walls right there. Um, and we're doing a call for submissions. So this is an opportunity for photographers if they've never exhibited to come and maybe have the, the first work. taste of yeah, this. Yeah, the first taste of an yeah, exhibition. Yeah, cool. um, it does get a lot of traffic, which is wonderful. Um, you have the option to sell your work, or you, if you don't want to, that's totally fine as well. Um, but 100% of the proceeds uh, from the sales goes back to the artist. So right, which is quite unique. I mean, exactly. on it, you, most yeah. owners are like, "Yeah, you can do it," but I want to cut it. He's yeah. just like, "No." Just Andy just wants to have work an on the wall. Yeah, work on the wall. For, for me, it's just a giving back piece. Hmm. Um, and for another photographer, it's an opportunity to Very share your work. Cool. So. Yeah, so the theme, uh, we're going to do a group exhibition this coming okay. June. Three to five people is kind of what you're sort yeah, of thinking. Three yeah, to five, three to five artists. We're going to do a call of submissions, um, and uh, the theme is home. Hmm. Home. So however you want to interpret the word home, whether it be home, if that's a uh, correlation to your partner, or if that is somewhere that's um, literal, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's up to you. Very cool. Yeah. And of course, we'll post some info on where to get, but yep. we'll just what's, what's a great way to get uh, in touch with, with you to get that happening? Per, uh, you can probably just send me an email, um, okay. jeremy at jeremyfokins.com. Um, when it comes to submission, we can put more info, but essentially when you make, uh, uh, when you send in your submission, um, uh, any, uh, a CV, so any kind of past exhibition experience, three to five uh, pieces of that you would want to show in that show. Gotcha. And then one, th one of the biggest things for us is it needs to be professionally framed and professionally printed. So, so cost us. Yeah, cost yeah, us that resolve, resolve photo, photo is really, yeah. really good. Um, this is in Calgary. Um, yeah, we prefer probably to keep it local if you want to ship your work in. Um, obviously that's going to come at the cost of the, of the photographer. Um, but Ooh, yeah, we, cool. we want it to be, we, we want to treat the space like a gallery. Um, you know, I, I don't mean to bag on Ikea or anything like that, but like cheap Ikea frames won't be accepted. There you um, go. Needs to be professionally printed and framed um, because you are getting a six month exhibition. Right. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's art. There you go. Yeah. Jeremy really doesn't like IKEA. I've yeah. been getting that over the whole. I love IKEA. So to <laughs> my kids like IKEA. So to all of our Swedish viewers, uh, <laughs> sorry about sorry, sorry yeah. about this. Yeah, yeah. Love your meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are there any more long-term projects? Because um, you've got your one book there with your Bangladesh and Nepal work. Is mm -hmm. there something else that you're working on right now? It's it's back to the land. Back to the land is right, right. now my sole my sole focus for the next 10, 10 years. I'd say. Okay. It's gonna be like I said. It's gonna be a long-term project. Um, there, I have a few ideas. I'm not gonna say them just yet. That's cool. But yeah. um, of how to take it, take that project to another level. Um, but um, yeah, that's kind of the focus, building my business and uh, focusing on doing personal projects as well. I think, you know, one of the things that I, I find inspiring about you, actually, oh, just I know, shut your mouth. Um, <laughs> no, and it's a good lesson for people. You know, you always get so many people who come in and they're like, well, how do I make a go of this? Or how do I make money doing this? Or, you know, how can I drive this? How can I, whatever. And, and it seems like, and not just you, I mean, a lot of other great photographers too, it seems like a big part of it is you just got to get out and shoot, yeah. probably without the intention of trying to make money out of it or trying to market. I mean, are you're, I, and I'm assuming yeah. this about you, you might be yeah. the greediest person ever, but I doubt it. Um, I'm assuming that what you're trying, <laughs> I'm assuming that what you're trying to do so is, is you're just trying to have like an experience and, yeah. and, and have stories and yeah. build it and just kind of see what comes from it. I mean, yeah. of course, yeah, we need to make a living. We want to yeah. have projects, but... I feel like what you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to go have experiences, I'm going to collect them, and then I'm going to build something from them. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think that's... That'd very, be accurate? Very, yeah. very much. Yeah, and and just... It, you, the, when you go with the attention of if money's your motivation, yeah. that never ends well. No, it it right? really doesn't. Like, I, yeah, and if that's your motivation, great. All the power to you, but... Um, Oh, I'm yeah. sure you've lost some money on some of these uh, adventures oh, yeah. too. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. of course. But that's the fun, right? That's like, the fun of it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 good. It's all good. I think we can uh, grab a couple more questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I want to know too. Uh, uh, what, uh, you've been to a lot of countries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get Ron's got you got questions, right? Yeah. We got time. But um, what other countries do you still want to visit? Or are there any countries where you're like, I haven't been there? Um, um, any countries you want to go back to? You're maybe like, our viewers can hook you up. Yeah. yeah. A free flight would be great. Um, <laughs> place to stay. Place to stay. Um, Tajikistan. I got this like urge to go to Tajikistan. I'd love to go back to Bangladesh for a number of reasons. 
Um, me and my wife are thinking about going to Costa Rica to learn Spanish. Just to like take three, Very six cool. months off and just go learn Spanish. Doesn't V already know Spanish? She does. Yeah. She's, so this is for you to go learn Spanish. It's for me to like <laughs> yeah, communicate. He'll finally be able to talk to his wife. <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally. Um, it's like you and Lily are just like, sorry, do you speak Spanish? Spanish? I know, you just tell my wife. <laughs> I'm trying to find her. She's <laughs> <laughs> tell me what intersection she's on. Um, we, <laughs> I love it. Um, we're, we're thinking about also going to Chile as well. So, but like, I don't know. Um, I'd love to, uh, I don't know. There's, there's so many places. Yeah. I don't know. I guess everywhere. There you go. Everywhere. Tajikistan. Like, yeah. Tajikistan. No, I've never heard anybody be like, I want to go to Tajikistan. No, never. <laughs> yeah. Tij uh, it's one of my, it's on the list. There you go. Yeah. Tajikistan. So it's yeah. always three or four on every list. Any Tajikistani viewers, please <laughs> contact uh, Jeremy Folkins at jeremy at jeremyfolkins.com. I bet you someone's at I bet you someone's at I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Kazakhstan, like really close. Okay, sir, go ahead. Um, you may speak. Do you ever look back on your work and you think, what was I thinking? All the time. All right. Every day. <laughs> no. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, That's what it. Thinking? And like, just storm out. Both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it, like, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Are you pretty critical <laughs> on yourself, or? Yes and no. I think there's just always this this urge, there's urge to, to, I don't know, you want to improve, you want to make better mm -hmm. work, you want to, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's tons, like, the back to the land stuff, there's lots of things I would have done differently with some of those portraits, but you do. That was we, your time, yeah, right? that was the moment. Well, that was that's it, how it and out, get yeah. over it and move on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Good because the follow up question from a completely different user was yeah. uh, What was your biggest mistake and what did you learn from it? Ooh. Biggest mistake in doing that 24 7 shootout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with TCS TV. the size of your Octobox. Uh, biggest mistake? <laughs> I think just in general or like. That's a that's a that's a broad question. Yeah, maybe photographically, maybe, maybe not photographic, in life, like on your adventure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, not not in life. Photography. Biggest biggest mistake in photography, um, or maybe like the biggest thing that you learned doing this. What was the sort of biggest thing that you gained on these adventures and travels? Biggest like, thing that I've gained as a, as a learning experience. I think just I think just just try, the biggest the biggest thing that I've learned is trusting your gut. Like okay. always yeah. trust your gut. That's anything, like whether that be in your business or in the way you you shoot, trust your gut. Well, even like you said there with Lily, right? You're like, okay, I'm walking away, and yeah. then something's just like, wait, there's something here. I should do something yeah. about this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It is. It, it I, that's the the biggest thing I've learned. I'm sure we always get those feelings when we're shooting photography, constantly, and that could be in any field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The business side, whether it be extra shooting, side, any of it. Like how many how many landscape photographers are like, oh, I sh I should it's, go out this morning. Yeah. Nah, it's cold. It's too early. No, yeah. maybe I'll. Maybe it'll happen tomorrow. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's you like it. when you have that feeling, yeah. you should be like, just go, just, just do go it. do it. Yeah. Get it done. Cool. Yep. Cool. That's yeah. it so cool. far. Um, when you are doing these things, of course, we're seeing a lot of human portraits. Mm -hmm. But w do you sh do you shoot landscapes when you're out there? Do you do you look for other scenes, or are you kind of like you know that's not that doesn't jazz me? I I'm not a landscape. I wouldn't per se. I'm a land I love. Don't get me wrong. I love being outside. I love. You must uh, see some beautiful stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's a uh, this one image. This was this was my uh, when I was in Nepal. Um, I made friends with a, a, a pilot that was running supplies, and I got put on the manifest as cargo. <laughs> and he dropped me <laughs> up in the middle of the Himalayas in a place called Simikon. It's about ten days walk from the closest road, so mm. it's remote. It's in the middle of the Himalayas. Um, dropped me off. Said I'll pick you up in two weeks. Go. And then I started hiking through the Himalayas and. Sleeping on uh, this was on someone's rooftop from in this family at a tent, and this was my this was my view every morning. Wow. Um, so again, trusting your gut, and it, huh? it just you get put on as cargo. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you mostly focus on yeah yeah. You're I not do. really shooting wildlife. You're not no shooting, no. Yeah. I'll like if the opportunity presents itself, I'll definitely shoot a landscape. I will I will right. I will yeah I will do that. But. Um, I'm a people shooter. Yeah. I love, yeah. That's what you're seeking out. That's yeah. what, yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. I mean, there must be some situations. Have you had situations, have you stories of where you're like, 
I might freeze to death tonight. I have nowhere to sleep, or like I'm have worms. I've got <laughs> worms, or <laughs> her, you know, yeah. Well, you know, joke aside, like yeah, like I'm really ill. Like, have you? It sounds like you sometimes put yourself in some pretty extreme situations, Jeremy. I wouldn't say extreme. Like, I look at some some photographers that are out there. Like Paul Ziska is one. Like, right. that guy is a machine. Right. I, like, oh my god. Local photographer here in Banff. Oh but my god. I'm surprised he hasn't been eaten by three bears yet. Or stuff, but yeah, yeah, the guy is insane. Falling off cliffs in the dark. Incredible photographer. Yeah. Great guy. Um, yeah, I think the extreme conditions have been are like. Like heat, um, I, there has been times where there's like rats and things crawling on my bed. Like nothing, cra- like <laughs> no, nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. Like I've been sick a few times, but not where the point where I was. There's been situations where n- close call, near death experiences. Yeah, we'll but, talk about that. Yeah, I, well, we were on this barge and the the mooring line snapped while we were crossing the river in Bangladesh, and then the whole thing tipped, and there was about seven you know, Greyhound style buses on this thing and it tipped up and the bus actually leaned and then you had water on either side and it got to the point where I was in the midst of jumping out the window so I wouldn't, the bus wouldn't tip over into the river and then- Right, trapping everybody. Yeah, exactly. So like things like that have happened, um, but not to the point where I'm like in the elements and like I'm frostbitten or anything like that. Right, yeah. I, I'm a wimp. He's a glamper, by the way. Yeah, this is not, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the revenant every yeah. time you go. It's I, only take, I only take one camera and two lenses because I have to put my pillow, pillow in there. there. <laughs> and I need my duvet. No. And like, I'll sleep in the back of my truck in like minus five or minus ten. Like, that, that's that's fine. Like, yeah. it, it's, not, and it's, not, it's not uncommon. Um, but for not, you, but, like, but no, it's you know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it is what it is, cool, right? Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Any uh, broken gear? How often do you break your gear? I'm really good with my gear. Really? My gear is like I am so anal about what? like my gear. You look at it; it is like I had a woman buy my laptop off me, and it was six years old, and she picked it up. And she's like. Is this thing new? And I'm like, no, man, it's like six years old. Yeah, I'm very good with my gear. Here's, a, here's one quick gear question before we go, because yeah. I'm sure everybody wants to know what, which what 24 use? and 50 do you use? Sigma Art Series. Yes, uh, like, it's it's amazing. Sigma Art filming us right now. Yeah, yeah, they're amazing. Still sticking to an SLR, of course. I know we always ask this question. Yeah. But uh, do you even? Yeah. Do you do you have any requirements for gear? What? Do you, you probably reliability. I, yeah. It like I think I think. Like low, obviously low light, but low light I think is common now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it it just needs to work. It's, it's a tool. Like yeah. it needs to work. Um, like my all that Bangladesh and Nepal stuff was on the D seven hundred. Um, Love that camera. Thing was a freaking beast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it just needs to work. Do you carry anything small? Do you ever? I, I don't. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I still haven't made that leap, but yeah. Interesting. I'm not a gear guy really. i I just I just needs yeah, to man. work and. That's yeah. That's yeah, it needs to have a twenty-four and a fifty, and you're good. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Exactly. Cool, Ron. Any other All questions? Right. So, nope. That's I it. I think awesome. we're good. Yeah. Thanks so much for thank coming you out. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, check out Jeremy's stuff. Check out his website, and uh, thanks for sharing the stories. Thanks, thanks for having me. Doctor. All right. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks much. All right. Yeah. We're Take out. Care. See you soon. Take Great. it easy.